In this tutorial we're going to concentrate on the front end and you'll learn how to manage your content and your images that are in the content area of your website. Before we begin, um, let's discuss some of the access control levels associated with the front end of your website. To describe these I'm going to go into the back end and in the user manager let's look at the demo user. So in the public front end um, you'll notice there are four user groups. The registered group is for users that have registered on your website, they've given you their email address and their name, um, and you are going to let them have access to certain things that the general public doesn't have access to. These can be things like um, posting on a forum, um, posting comments, or maybe you have um, some software or a unique page on your website you only want your users to be able to have access to. An author would be somewhat someone associated with your company that has rights to create new content. Um, however, the author does not have access to place the content on a certain page or publish that content. An editor would have all the rights of a registered user and an author, and they also have rights to edit any page on your website um, and save those changes. A publisher has all the rights of a registered user, author, and editor, and they also have the rights to publish any content regardless of the user that, cr that created that content. For our demo today, we're going to have our demo user be an editor. Um, and you'll see what what an editor can do. Let's go back to the front end and see what we can do with our demo user who has editor rights. First step is to log in. On your website you may have a link or um, simply be provided with a URL to log in. In this case it's in a module position. So I log in and I have my user menu which are things that I have access to that a general user may not have access to. For example, I can submit an article because as an editor I also have author rights. Um, however, as an editor I don't have publisher rights, which means I can write content but I can't make that live on the website. Um, let's browse to a page that we can edit so that you can learn how to do that more effectively. So I've browsed to this Joomla overview page and I have this icon which is the edit article button. It looks like a paper and pencil and when I click on that I'm presented with a WYSIWYG editor. In our case we're using the JCE WYSIWYG editor um, and you'll first notice I have four rows of buttons. Um, some of these buttons you'll be familiar with and some you may not be. Um, simply hover your mouse over any button to see a short title of what that button would do. Um, the administrator of your website has rights to hide or add as these buttons um, to your editor based on a group that you're a part of. Um, in this case we have, we're showing all of the buttons um, but you'll notice that some of them are grayed out. The reason why some of them are grayed out is because we can't use them right now. If I were to highlight some text, you'll notice many of the buttons become lit up because I can use them now. For example, with that highlighted, I could make it a link. If you're comfortable with HTML, you can always use the show hide button and paste or edit the HTML um, that is generated by the WYSIWYG editor. Another feature to be aware of is if you scroll down to the bottom we have our publishing parameters um, where we can tell it to start publishing and finish publishing on a date. Say that we're advertising a certain event you may want to stop publishing it after that event has occurred. Um, and who has access to see that content um, and the ordering that it will come in on the website. Another thing to be aware of is to always add some metadata to your article. Um, your metadata is what um, 
search engines use to display your listing in their in their search results. Um, so always include an accurate description and some keywords. Again, these are for SEO purposes to help your content be found on the web or on the web. Another button you'll want to become familiar with down at the bottom of your editor is the read more button. This button is used so that you can split up an article or have a portion of your article be some intro text. In our case on the front page we display a small paragraph or a small blurb of an article that's used as intro text and then a user would have to click a read more link to read the entire article. Um, an administrator has the ability to specify if they want this to be shown or hidden on the full article and that gives you the ability to really put anything that you want to drive um, your visitors to this article. Now let's see how easy it is to add and manipulate the text and make it look the way you want. So I've added this line. Here's some new text. Um, let's say we really wanted to make that stand out. So let's highlight it and let's make it bold and let's change the font. We can also change the font size. We can also change the color. So you'll see very quickly, very easily, I've made some text really stand out in my article with just a click of a few buttons. The best way for you to become familiar with all of the things that you can do with your text is to simply edit, open the editor and play around with some of these buttons. Let's see how easy it is to um, add and edit images. You may have noticed before that there's this image button down below the text editor. You can use this one um, to browse and upload new images, but if you have the JCE editor, I would suggest that you just use their image manager. When the image manager comes up, um, the first thing I would I usually do is I upload an image. That's done with this button to the bottom right where you can add several images at a time. Um, in this case let's just add a single image and click the upload button. You'll know it's uploaded when you get the green arrow um, and at this point I can close the upload dialog box. Now we need to insert our image so we click on the image that we've just uploaded. We make sure that something comes in the URL and alternate text. Um, this can be anything that you'd like it to be. And then let's set some dimensions. Um, I know that 640 pixels wide may be a little bit large to fit where I want it to, so I'm going to scale this down to say 300. And because I have proportional box checked, I don't need to do anything to this box. And you'll notice when I um, select it that it automatically changes it to keep it proportional. Alignment, you can see a preview over here. Um, when, if I were just to insert the image at this point, um, we may end up with a lot of blank white space, um, but we can use alignment to fix that problem. If we wanted the image to be on the left of the text, we could click left. Um, in this case, let's put it on the right. Um, margin is that we we don't want the text to go all the way to the image and touch it. So let's add a small margin of 10 pixels around that. I'm going to keep equal values. Uh, again, that means you don't have to put anything in the rest of these boxes. Um, but make sure that you do have something in each of these bo boxes just in case. Um, let's also put a border around our image. And now let's scroll down and insert the image. And there it is. If I were to click Save on our article, we see the article is successfully saved and it's live on our website. To make sure the article looks the way that you want it to, you can always log out and view the article the same way that visitors to your website view it. 